Well, welcome to the Stone Roadie Podcast. It's the one you don't want to miss. It stars Craig Reed, the Stone Roadie, and Griff, the Rocket Scientist. Let's not forget Kathy Godsey and all the old friends that come along. Lord, we'll be a talking skinner and leaving you with a song. Hey Stone Roadie Show fans, I'm Shelby Barrett, the official Stonette for the Stone Roadie Show, and this is Saturday Night Special with Craig Reed and Kathy Godsey. Podcast number 150, the Stone Roadie Show action. Alrighty then, looky here, looky here. It's another Saturday night special with the lovely Kathy Godsey, and it's March 30th. Easter Eve on the Stone Roadie Show. And what do we got going on this Saturday night special? Lovely Kathy Godsey. <laughs> well, it's good to be back, Craig. And you're right, it's Easter Eve. And um, Craig and I were thinking about dressing up with bunny ears, but we, we never got to that. But we're still happy to be here. I want to <laughs> say thanks to um, Heather Langley for this beautiful necklace she sent me a couple of months ago and i finally had an opportunity to wear it on the podcast and to disciple day for this shirt he sent me the road case last week he's been sending us so many wonderful gifts so thank you so much to just Dis to disciple day and then i just want to um uh also add one, one of the things that dave sent me which is so fitting is that kathy is not stoked <laughs> <laughs> I said, oh, I have to wear it. I have to show that on the podcast. But we have a lot of questions. So, Craig, you put out an, um, a post yesterday asking for questions, and I noticed there are a lot of new questions that have not been asked before. So it'll be fun to go over those questions today. Oh, what are you drinking at? Oh, there you go. You know, I haven't had my coffee yet today. I got up and I was running around so much doing things that I didn't have my cup of coffee. So we'll see how I do. <laughs> so we get through yeah, this podcast thanks, thanks to tp now i'm addicted to coffee now <laughs> i only drink a cup during the show here yeah a little bit i usually have one as soon as i wake up but i was running around doing so much today but i'll have it at dinner time so we got a lot of questions i want to say um uh prayer still to confide jill i hope he's he's hanging in there and um Craig is going to send me that dream catcher one of these days. I haven't received it yet, <laughs> but he has a lot of stuff to send me. And Craig, you know, I just want to um, talk real quick. So the other day you and Griff were talking about uh, one of the questions was about Jojo and how she called you a male whore all the time. <laughs> and uh, you recollected the time that I first met you 42 years ago, although I didn't know who you were and you didn't know who I was, but. Just in case anybody didn't see that podcast, it was podcast 29 where we talked about that. <laughs> so what happened was um, Rossington Collins was playing at the Palladium in New York City. It was in 81, maybe November of 81, I think. And I had taken the train into Manhattan with two of my guy friends. They were just good friends of mine. And uh, we, we we managed to get in through us, I think, a side door. I mean, I think there was a side door open. So we got in and then uh, I was trying to throw Gene's name around. You know, I'm a good friend of Gene. I want to see Gene. He's going to get me backstage. But who did I encounter was Craig. <laughs> <laughs> it was Craig and some other guy. I guess maybe Mike Sparks. Is that who the guy probably was? Yeah, yeah. Two of you, and uh, I was trying to, you know, say, hey, I'm a good friend of Jeans. Can you go get him for me? And you said, you know, something like, you know, uh, you're pretty attractive. And you got real, real <laughs> uncomfortably close to me. And you were looking down my shirt. I had like a V-neck, <laughs> one of those gauzy tops on. You were looking right down my shirt. I was, I felt so uncomfortable. You were like, you know, definitely within my space. And uh, my friends didn't do anything. I don't know. They were just hoping that I would. You know, we could get away, get backstage. But then all of a sudden, the band, um, it was time for the band to come up. And Alan, everybody went right past us, came up the stage. And I think they had their guitars. I think Alan had his guitar. So that was that. And I did not get to see Gene Odom on that, 
at Condor, but I do re remember you. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, no question. And then if I had gone on the bus when uh, Jean had offered my cousin and me to ride overnight on the bus, I would have sure I would have had to have de dealt with you again. You know what? One of the questions somebody asked was about the buses. How many buses were there? And uh, which one did you ride on? This was actually from Brian Box. He's actually asking about Leonard Skinner 1991 and all the other um, um, subsequent versions of the bands. But just in general, how many buses did they use and how were they divided up according to the band members, road crew? How did that work? In Rossington Collins or in, or in the Leonard Skinner Tribute? Well, he said Leonard, Leonard Skinner, Skinner Tribute. Skinner. Th there's uh, yeah. what they call the Milk and Cookies bus. And that bus had Johnny and Gary and Dale and um, Ricky and uh, and Carol Chase and uh, and I was and I and I was on that bus for oh a couple tours and then I moved over to the uh, to the other bus that had um, Michael Cardelloni and Billy Powell and uh, Leon and. Uh, and uh, the other people in the band, and then uh, and then toward the end, when I when I got more on the, I was more more working with the with the with the crew and the production end of it than I was the, with the band. I started that, toward the end of my career with them. I started traveling on the crew bus, and that's when I. That's the bus when I was on and when I was peeing on everybody. I heard about that. <laughs> <laughs> so there were three buses. In case anybody doesn't know that story, yeah, I got pretty intoxicated and I woke <laughs> up and I had to go. I had to pee and I didn't want to piss my pants, so I pulled it out and was was trying to make it to the up the hallway of the bus, and I, I guess I started peeing before I got in the in the bathroom and I was peeing on the curtains and the <laughs> oh, <God>. <laughs> <laughs> I opened the door and everybody was in the front lounge and I come out, open the door and I was peeing. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> and I didn't realize it. And I just went in there and fit kind of finished peeing and just opened the door and come out of there and, and just like nothing happened and just walked back, went back into my bunk and, Got up the next morning and went up front, and they were all looking like at me like, <laughs> and I'm going, what the hell are you guys all looking at? And they go, you don't remember what you did last night? And I go, what the hell are you talking about? Because you pissed all over the bus. I go, you're lying. I did not. <laughs> I'm sure you could smell that the next day. Sure, that wasn't very pleasant. <laughs> to, to clean up gosh <laughs> it just smelled like recycled uh crown royal oh my god <laughs> oh that's funny so are you ready for the questions yeah let's roll right. them questions. all right because i i sent you the document before but you know you said you didn't get a chance to go over it, but that's okay all right so let's start with um autumn honaker and i know i asked you this question and uh you you told me the answer but i'm going to ask it on the podcast so autumn wants to know did any of the bands band members ever ever battle any paternity suits maternity suit no uh -uh. Not, not that i'm aware of okay. um, leon might have i don't know <laughs> <laughs> uh, no but to uh -uh. your knowledge do you know if there are any other children floating around that may be they just kept quiet because considering all the girls that they hooked up with and, you know, how do you know that? I've heard that happen? Ronnie has one. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 I know like a lot of celebrities, Arnold Schwarzenegger, he fathered a child with a maid who worked for them. And uh, Jimi Hendrix fathered a couple of kids. So, you know, and that's only two out of, I'm sure, many, many people who uh, father children. All right. And then Joe Muller wants to know, he said, you know, I read once that Gene Odom had his watch and wallet stolen him at the off of him at the crash site. 
Do you know whether that really happened to him? Did somebody really take his his uh, watch? And I don't know. I'm. I, I don't know that. I, I don't think uh, I don't think uh, Gene was lost consciousness, you know. Oh. But, you know, so I don't okay. I don't, I'm not sure about that. Okay, so that could be just hearsay. All right. Cousin Wayne from Australia. He said, uh, "Happy Easter, cousin, to you." <laughs> yeah, he's to supposed know. to be my fourth or fifth cousin <laughs> in Australia, I guess. I don't know I, uh, how he would end up in Australia because I'm my people are from West Virginia, so I don't know. <laughs> That's the beauty of the ancestry. Well, my my ancestry goes back to England, which you know they could have he could have been one of my over in England. They could have shipped him over there on a prisoner ship to Australia or something. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds logical. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Every once in a while, I, I did the um, one of those sites a while ago, and every once in a while, I go and I log in, and I don't have to pay for it, and I just you can see that the everything shifts a little. You know, the the numbers change, the percentages change. Sometimes it shows I have a little bit of German. Sometimes it shows I have a little French. I don't know how that would have happened, but um, it's interesting. Sometimes it shows I have a little greek i don't know i know really what my background is but um it's interesting <clears throat> that it keeps changing it, it shows my sister i have one sister that's on it. it shows her as a sibling but it shows my nieces as cousins oh really yeah oh interesting i have one niece that's on it that shows her as a cousin but it shows my sister as a sibling my one sister really? as a sibling, yeah but you have to do the same site right i mean if if you do Ancestry and somebody does 23 and May, I don't think you're going to get those results. I think you have to be on the same, from what I, from I what I recall, I think you have to be in the same site for that. So I just, okay. I, I did, I did, I just did it because I always heard that I, did, I either had Indian or black in me and I wanted to find <laughs> out. So, uh, Cause I used to tell everybody I was part black and they, you know, but I'm not, I, I kind of <laughs> wish I was, that'd be fun. You know, I'm half black. <laughs> I'm not if a, if a policeman pulls you over, you could say it's pretty obvious why you pulled me over. <laughs> my grandmother looked, you know, she, she looked Indian or something, you know, my, on my dad's side. Yeah. She, she looked something, but, uh, Really? No. Yeah. I'm all um, Scottish and German and English and Norwegian. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't have no black in me. <laughs> <laughs> that you know. That you know. <laughs> <laughs> so cousin what Wayne wants to know, um, did you guys ever do any gigs over Easter time or was everybody home with their families? No, Easter wasn't really a no, we did. We we were only at home during Christmas. You know, we spent a, we did a lot of shows on Thanksgiving on uh, out on the road. But yeah, Christmas we were always home. Okay, all right. Well, that's good to hear. Yeah. All right. Now, a guy named uh, Warren Hanbury, he wants to know. Um, he said, "Can you rank the band members and other personnel, including yourself, for their shit kicking ability?" During a barroom brawl <laughs> or any other confrontation, in your opinion, who kicked the best shit? Was it you? <laughs> was it Ronnie? Was it Leon? <laughs> or was it Alan? <laughs> um, Alan didn't fight very well. And then Gary didn't, you know, he fought, but, you know, those, they weren't, none of them were really fighters, you know, I don't, and, you know, Leon. Yeah. You know, none of Billy, you know, none of them were really fighters. You know, Ronnie, Ronnie was the only really fighter. I mean, Gary and, and, you know, and Alan, they, Alan liked to box, you know, but he, he just, he'd like to put on boxing gloves and box with you, but he, his arms are so long, you know, he just come <laughs> at you just, just whirlwind. And, you know, I wouldn't call it any form of boxing. But. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, who are the brawlers? Who are the ones that are throwing chairs, you know, throwing TVs, TV sets? Oh, uh, who, uh, Leon, Leon was a brawler. I wouldn't call him a fighter. He would, he would just start <laughs> shit and take off. And <laughs> <laughs> what about Billy? No, he didn't really start any shit. Uh -uh. Mm. No, uh -uh. So who there, would you it, Leon was the instigator. Yeah, he, that was his nickname, yeah. the instigator. Leon the instigator. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Leon and Ronnie were the ones that would start 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 the start stuff. Yeah. But what about That's you? Were, were you a good shit kicker? No, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I never got I never got beat up, so I guess I could handle my own, you know. Mm. Well, you were the friend when Roddy said, Do I have a friend, <laughs> right? He was Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was me. Yeah. I was always Ronnie's compadre. He would always come to my room banging on my door. Do I have a friend? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what? Um, so I got Ron Eckerman's book. Um Dave, the disciple, sent me Ron, sent Ron, me Ron Ackerman's book. And uh, I've been looking through it. I, I really like it. It's a really well-written <laughs> book. But I do want to read, um, I'm sh for anybody who hasn't heard this or read this or seen it on YouTube, I love Ron Ackerman's description of Craig. And I'm going to read it because I love it. It's so interesting. <laughs> he said, um, you know, Craig was a crew member who looked really strong with red squinting eyes and a mild smile. I'd met Craig earlier in the he day. He said, no, it doesn't say strong. It said stoned. He, no, he's, he, he said he looked really strong with red. He looked, no, no. He said I looked really stoned with red. Oh, squinting okay. Eyes. You know yeah, what? I, I, I look, right. he, and then come Craig, and he looked really stoned <laughs> with these red squinty eyes. Yeah, that was it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You know what I got this from on the YouTube on the transcript. I copied it from the transcript. So I'm no, sorry. I said I didn't. I didn't really he, and then come Craig, and he looked really stoned. Stoned. With, with, with squinty eyes. Yeah, yeah. With red squinting <laughs> eyes. And a, and a mild smile. Yeah, yeah. So, so, Can yeah. we see that red squinting eyes and the mild smile? <laughs> there it is. <laughs> you know, I'm, I noticed. I noticed when, when when we do these that on YouTube, it it gives me. Um, uh, options of which pictures I can use, you know, and it, it gives me, uh, what do you call it, snapshots of, of different, you know, and when it, it always shows that I'm always smiling or, you know, <laughs> you know, it's funny. Well, you are always smiling. That's for sure. Yeah, I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you are. <laughs> all right i'm gonna finish reading it and i hope now i did get this off of the um okay the i'm sorry to interrupt you <laughs> no that's okay i'm glad that you it's stoned makes more sense than strong he yeah. looked really stoned uh, with red I really st yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah and then he says i met craig earlier in the day and i found him to be a hard worker who had been with the band for quite a while they picked him up earlier in their early in their career. In spite of his stoner appearance and easygoing attitude, he was highly professional and took excellent care of the band, making sure everything was in place and ready to go. At the time, I didn't know exactly what Craig did. He was definitely a lead man on the crew, and he took care of whatever was needed. Most crew members were specialists of a sort, designed to take care of one of one member of the band. Craig seemed to kind of float around to see everyone's needs rather than being attached to one single musician like the rest. And don't let that stoner appearance fool you. He was always on top of his game and he was more often than not really, really stoned. <laughs> <laughs> My hat's off to anyone who could pull that off. That was really well, very well written. That was a great book. Yeah. And then he compared me to Willie Nelson. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> that. He was the only one that could. I was <laughs> me and him were the only ones that could work on a full stone. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so that was cool. I'm enjoying reading that book. I look through it when I get a chance. It was a good book. Yeah. Yeah. 
I think I, I like the audio. I like the audio uh, book of it too. That's that's pretty good. Oh yeah, I didn't I didn't think of it. I should get that. I listened to it in the car really, instead of reading it. All right. So um, the next question is from um, again from Warren Hanbury, and he said uh, he wants to know what you remember about the Muscle Shoals Alabama recording session. And he said, is it true that the band stayed at a truck stop while they were there? And they got into a fight with some truckers over there having long hair. Do you remember that? No, that was, you know, actually, that, that when they did the Muscle Shoals thing, that was before I got with them. Um, you know, we, oh. we went back to Muscle Shoals. I went to Muscle Shoals with them to do, um, oh, God, I don't know. There's some big pictures when we were down there, and it was the Honkettes, and then I, they were doing some overdubs or something down there, I forget exactly what that was about but yeah i was only i was only down there that couple times but that was after they won the battle of the bands and went down to muscle shoals and recorded the first time yeah i wasn't around during that okay all righty well did they ever get into uh into it with people did ever, any people ever oh, over you know? your long hair yeah 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 yeah, back yeah. In the, yeah, that back in you know Jacksonville is a naval, a naval port, you know. So mm -hmm. you know they played a lot of places where there was navy, you know, guys there. And you know back in the early or late sixties, you know, long hair was kind of, you know, I don't know. A lot of people would harass you if you had long hair back then, you know. Right. Okay. All right. Um, now, Brian, Brian Goob Gibbons. Brian Gibbons is such a cool guy. He's always saying nice things about you, about me. I have a question for Brian. Brian, where does the Goob come from? <laughs> is it a middle name Goober, Goober or something? But it's Brian Goob Gibbons. So you can. Yeah, he lost. He's is. lost. He lost 130 pounds. I talk to Brian a lot. He lost 130 pounds and he says he's still losing. Yeah. God bless him. What is and, he doing? He, he he blames me. He, well, he uh, gives some of the contributes some of that weight loss to me. He said when I start first started listening to you, I, you kind of pissed me off, you know, <laughs> <laughs> because he was he said he was heavy, and you know he said it kind of pissed me off some of the shit you were saying about fat people. <laughs> but then, he said then I realized, man, he this guy's just trying to help, you know. So he yeah. said that he, I really, um, 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 helped him, you know, get, go, get over the hump, you know, you know, he'd open he looks the refrigerator great. and the refrigerator and say, get out of there, you fat bastard. <laughs> 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 Not really, but I just made that yeah. up. <laughs> no, he does. He keeps, he's, uh, keeps putting, uh, profile pictures. He looks thinner and thinner. He looks great. Oh so, yeah. He's good. Yeah, he's he just had a pretty serious neck operation and stuff. Yeah, he's yeah, he's been through hell, man. Yeah, I saw that, and I'm glad that you're recovered. You're doing well, Brian. You're you're a good guy. You and your beautiful wife are nice people. But he wants to know: um, Do you remember Ronnie putting Al Cooper in his car and telling him that he would call him after they finished recall recording "Simple Man"? Yeah, yeah, I yeah, I do remember yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. What was yeah. that about? Um, Cooper just didn't 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 want to record that song, and Ronnie just kind of said, "You know, come here, Al," and just took him outside and said, "Well, we'll call you when we're done." <laughs> <laughs> that was about it, you know. I mean, you know, it, you know, what are you gonna? Say? What's Cooper gonna say? You know, he just said, you know. Put him in his car and said, you know, Al, we'll, we'll just call you when we're done. <laughs> Why didn't he want them to record the song? Uh, I, I, it was, you know, it's a, you know, it, I, it's just your, um, what you feel about the, you know, you don't really know what a song is until it's done, you know, and it's yeah. like, I didn't like Tuesday's Gone when I heard Ed ask me what I thought about Tuesday's Gone, and I, Told him I didn't really care for it. You know, it wasn't really one of their rock yeah. songs, you know, so I really wasn't, right. it, you know, didn't like it that much. But but you know what? It turns out to be a, lo a lot of people's favorite song. It's probably one of my favorite Skinner songs. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
And I think it was Alan's favorite song, wasn't it? Wasn't that one of his favorite songs, if I'm mm. not mistaken? I don't know. I, don't know. Mm. I love it. It's a beautiful ballad. Okay. Um, Monty. Oh, Joey Yemma. Hey, Joey. Joey always says, I'm so glad to see you back on the Stone Roadie show. Uh, he <laughs> wants to know, did Ricky ever practice with the guys at the Hell House in the early days? No, I never saw... I heard a lot about Ricky when I first got with him. I always, Ricky's oh. name was all brought up, always brought up and, and never negatively. But, um, you know, they always talked highly of him and stuff. But um, I never, I didn't meet uh, Ricky until I was with the band probably pff, over a year, you know, before I, it was probably 1975 before I, uh, we did our first show with Blackfoot, and that was my first, uh, when I first met Ricky, yeah. When did the guys find Hell House? Like, when did they start? Practicing? That was before me. I guess I've heard different uh, opinions of uh, who found that, you know, Joe Crimp or, or Dean or, you know, or, uh, you know, who, I you know, the Joe Crimp and... Uh, and 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 his band uh running easy they you know they they rehearsed out there when skinner was on the road running easy with that was where they would would, would rehearse uh, so the, before skinner found it wh who owned the house or i mean orig originally it was somebody just uh, there, I, yeah right? somebody you know i i i don't know yeah i it, i don't really know who found it but you know it was way out in green cove springs and Joe Crimp, that, he still lives out there. I don't know if he lived out there then or now, but he still lives out in that area. So, he, mm -hmm. you know, all those guys were all good friends. You know, my friend Ronnie Caruso and Joe Crimp and Dean. Dean and Ronnie Caruso were all always really good friends. And Joe Crimp and and um, and you know the whole the whole uh, gang. You know. You know, we're kind of all pretty close. So, uh, but but the house was abandoned at the time they found it. Wasn't it wasn't a house; it was just a shack. I back, back. Oh, well, okay. Yeah, it was a, a kind of a cattle. The you know, guy had some cows and stuff, and it was just a a cabin back there by the by the uh, by the Black Creek back there where the, where the dock was. It was just an old shack, a cabin, you know. I don't How many know. rooms were inside? Just one room inside. Just one. Yeah, it was oh, okay. a yeah, it was a, a one big room and a and a, a little bathroom, and that was it. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. it's just a little shack. Hmm, it's interesting. All right. Yeah, there's no kitchen or or nothing like that. It was just a little shack. Oh, okay. Yeah, it had a bathroom. That's it. All right. Um. So the next question is from Monty Holt. These questions are are kind of all over the place. I didn't get to put them in any kind of order. So they're going to go from one topic to the other. But he wants to know, is there so something about the um, at the crash scene? There's a missing briefcase. He said, is it really true, the story about the missing briefcase at the crash scene? True. Was something missing there? It's call. possible, you know. I heard there was a, a a guitar some guy took off with. I but I wasn't really even aware that there were all, any instruments on the uh, on the plane. You know, I get you know, but you know they would take they would you know had stuff at the hotel. I I didn't really inventory everything they had, but I heard there was you know there were a couple amps on the on the plane. I guess there were. Uh, you know, there was uh, maybe a couple guitars on there. I'm, I heard, I heard somebody say that somebody saw somebody pick up a guitar and take off with it. But you know, I was unconscious, so I can't comment. Yeah. You know, I, you know, um, I got hit in the head real hard. So <laughs> you know, I, you know, there's a lot of stuff I don't remember. You know. Yeah. Well, wonder where this stuff comes comes from, but. It's, I guess, a rumor of floating around. And, you know, the other day I was listening to one of the um, interviews at the end of the podcast, the last couple of guys who were interviewed. Somebody said something about 
the plane potentially had too many people on it or was overloaded with passengers. Did you? No. Uh -uh. No. That was a pass that, that was a passenger plane, man. That was you know, yeah. that 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 plane was a, you know, hauled, you know, passengers for like American Airlines and stuff. It was like it would hold probably 60 passengers maybe something okay. like that. So you know, that's that's a lot of people nowadays Nowadays, 60 people weigh a good God. <laughs> you know, back then, back then, you know, people, you know, normal people only weighed, you know, 150 pounds or, you know, two, less than 200. Now, now people are, most people are 250, 300 pounds, you know, so, you know, yeah. it wouldn't, it wouldn't hold a lot of people these days, but back in, back when people were normal, it, it held quite a few people. <laughs> yeah. He mentioned something about that being an overloaded with passengers. And I thought, wow, no, there wasn't, you know, no, uh -uh. no, it was, no, there was 20, 26 people on it. And then, you know, none of us were, nobody was fat, you know, back then. So. It had some luggage. My my luggage probably weighed more than this. <laughs> I, had, I know all those I, suitcases. <laughs> I, had more, I have more luggage than anybody did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. I still overpack. <laughs> <laughs> all righty. And then Bob Varga. Now, Bob is uh, in the band that... Um, Skinner uh, tribute band that I saw a couple months ago. They're very good. He's the drummer. And he wants to know, um, back in 19, on the 1991 album, Artemis and Kurt Custer are both listed as drummers. Do you know how many songs that Artemis actually played on in that 1991 album? Artemis didn't play on any of the songs on the album, I don't think. Okay, because somebody answered his question, and they said, you know, I believe they were back to a double drum kit. Um, on the road, it was a double kit tour. You remember anything about that? Yeah, no. both. Yeah, Artemis, like I said before, uh, when it started out, Artemis, Artemis said he he just couldn't hang, you know, when the, when the tribute band started up artemis just said man i i'm not able to 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 do this by myself you know i i i, I need somebody to you know come in and give me a hand i'm i'm just not strong enough to do this by myself anymore so that's why they brought in custer and then uh, so custer you know I, I, I he said on the when we had him on the on the podcast he said when you know artemis you know, played on the on the old songs. He was more or less the lead drummer on the old songs, and then Custer uh, played on the new stuff. You know, the the ninety one okay. stuff. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, that makes sense. Thank you, Craig. Thanks for. There you go, Bob. And Danny Podesta, he wants to know about the the errors that the band members made. He said. Do you recall how many errors the band members made playing live or how often they made mis errors and how did they address them? And he said, which, you know, I read band? that. The, the old band or the new band? No, the original band. He said, oh, I okay. read that Ed, Ed King broke a string and Ronnie rode him hard. Is that true? Do you remember that? And what other? Yeah, that was, that was when Ronnie and, and Chuck Flowers went to jail and, uh, and 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 uh, Ed broke a string. That's what. That's the night that Ed quit when he broke a string. When he, blamed, you know, he Ronnie. I guess Ronnie thought he should have changed his own strings or whatever. That that's before I was the guitar roadie. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, that was when Raymond was the drum tech and and uh, and and Chuck Flowers was the guitar roadie. And, uh, uh, yeah, and, and Ronnie and Chuck went to jail, and uh, they were in jail, and Chuck didn't get the chance to change Ed's strings, and then, yeah, Ed busted a string. But, yeah, most of the time, the strings get changed every night, you know. 
unless they only play the song like once or you know, once during or once or twice during a set on a couple songs and they don't change for every night but most of the time every every guitar gets just the strings changed on it i heard i heard six gun the other day went and went and played and they they broke us they got uh, uh nick broke a string <laughs> and, and they weren't what happy happened? about that he what broke his string. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, he don't have a roadie. I mean, six guns. That was my have, next. That was my yeah, next. Yeah, they question. don't have roadies, so <laughs> they, they were kind of screwed, blued, and tattooed. <laughs> so when that happens, what do they do? Does he just keep playing the song and change it after the song? Well, they, you know, that's why I have a backup guitar. You know, but oh, then man. again, if you don't have a roadie, you have to. You know, you have to, uh -huh. you know, you have your wireless on the strat. You know, it takes a little, little bit of time to change guitars if you don't have a roadie. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Well, hopefully someday they'll have their, their own roadies. <laughs> so, so I have a question. It's a silly question, but I'm not a, I'm not a guitarist, obviously. I wouldn't know this. But how does a string break? Does it anything cause it to break or is it just something that, you should change the strings every day for well, preventing the fret, the, the when you when you the fret, you know, when you bend them and stuff, the fret, the fret kind of saws on the on the string, you know, and it, it gets, you know, it, it makes it, you know, weaken the, you know, right where the fret is. If it's, you know, you're doing, you know, right. You know, and it, especially if you're bending the string on the fret, it kind of saws the saws the string down and it makes it weak and it you know sometimes you know just sometimes if you over pick it and those those e strings those little, those little e strings man they're only nine or a ten and they're you know mm -hmm. they, they pop pretty easy you know you can you can pop them things just changing strings if you over stretch them you can pop those little right. little e strings you know there, there he is. So, what about um, what about the errors? Were there any other errors, and and would would anybody pick up on those errors, or just? Oh yeah, Ronnie picked up on them. <laughs> really? Oh really? yeah, they could all hear him. Yeah, they could. Yeah, they can tell. Yeah, they can tell if somebody's out of this. Is somebody was out of tune? That you know, that, you know, one thing that you know they can't really tell who's out of tune. They just know somebody's out of tune. Somebody was out of tune. <laughs> you know. <laughs> And uh, yeah, there's there, you know, it, it, when there's alcohol involved, there's always an error, you know. <laughs> there was always alcohol involved. But, but they, did they ever? Blame yeah, Ronnie it on didn't. You? Ronnie didn't put up with no, you know. When you went up on that stage, you better have your shit together, you know. Yeah. He didn't put. He didn't put up with nothing. Not many errors, you know. Yeah. That's true. Okay. Um, Philip Morgan wants to know what's the funniest thing that you ever remembered happening during your time with Skinner? Funniest, the funniest thing. There thing? Is yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Just give us a list of a couple. <laughs> it had to have involved Leon. <laughs> Gosh, I don't know. That that's a hard that you know, geez, there are so many. <laughs> what about the time that somebody crapped in somebody's shoes Remember, well, that, was uh, Leon. That, that was funny yeah yeah because <laughs> <laughs> i didn't actually see that you know i just heard about it but that was a funny story you know what about alan did alan ever do anything really funny oh yeah alan was alan was a character he you know he was you know i can't really remember anything specifically but he everybody everybody had their own own little um jovial things that they did you know that was you know mm -hmm. it was like a three ring circus it was <laughs> they kept it, <laughs> you know it was funny <laughs> a lot of things were funny all right carol Locke wants to know did any of the band members ever fall off the stage during a show? <laughs> oh God, yeah, yeah. Leon <laughs> did a couple of really? times. I think Ronnie did once. You're kidding. I think he, you know, kind of. 
how that happened? Stones. What did they got too close to the edge, or what happened? Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't. You know, I don't. I don't really remember Ronnie doing it. I, I Leon did. Um, <laughs> but he didn't stand close to the stage, though, did he? I thought he kind of stayed back near the drums. Well, you know the, you know those, um, you know that sometimes you don't see the edge of that stump, that stage <laughs> coming up. <laughs> you know, you're looking out there, and the edge of the stage is down there. You know. wow. Yeah, we, had, we, yeah, we have to put, we, we had to put, we, we have to put white tape right at the edge of the stage. Yeah, we have to put white tape down so they can see where the edge of the stage is. Yeah, the, wow, the whole edge crazy. of the stage is always lined with white tape, so you can, so when it, you know, so when it gets kind of dark up on stage at times you can see where the edge of the stage is what well, i would have liked to have seen what that looks like just all of a sudden i've fallen around. off the stage before yeah. <laughs> oh yeah 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 one time i was i was um I, I i was going up and i went behind but i went behind a curtain i went and uh yeah and um I went behind the curtain and there was no stage there. <laughs> I was just like, oh I was God. holding my pipe. I never did lock, drop my pipe. So. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You want to lose the pipe, but Greg goes, off the <laughs> I, I fell, about, fell about six foot off the stage, but I didn't drop my pipe. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> uh, that was all i was worried about i wasn't worried about hurt <laughs> Greg, are you okay oh. yeah my pipe is i didn't okay. lose my bowl i still got my bowl yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's funny all um, right and walter white he has a question about well he says does your ex-wife I'm not sure which which one he's referring to, but he <laughs> says, "Does your ex-wife have any photos or memorabilia?" I assume it's wife number one, right? Because she was in a lot of the pictures. And <coughs> the she doesn't have anything left. No. No. <clears throat> no. Chad. Chad's pissed off because uh, no, she she got in some she. Uh, Chad had a bunch of stuff that that came up missing that after uh, she got had a couple of divorces and stuff that he had that she was supposed to kept keep come up missing come really? up missing yeah yeah, yeah. she was close with uh Alan's wife and right the wives and I wonder yeah, before yeah after the before the crash, date she was, but after the crash, uh, she wasn't. Oh, she wasn't. Oh, that's right, because you guys split up for a while. Yeah. Yeah. After the crash, after the crash, yeah, we split up as soon as I. Yeah, she was. Yeah, I got word that she was. Uh, uh, um, having sex with a neighbor who was a cocaine dealer. <laughs> when I came home, allegedly, allegedly. No, not allegedly. <laughs> oh no. Okay. All right. No, so it's out there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You can ask Chad. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And Rob Roger Johnson, he wants to know um, why did Leon and Billy go with Alan? And to the Alan Collins band, and not um, and not Gary. You know why? Well, Gary left. That's that was when after the Rossington Collins band. That's when that's why the watch. That's why the Alan Collins band started because Gary left. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's Gary true. and Dale left and went to Wyoming, and that's. That's why the Alan Collins band started because Gary left. There was no Rossington no more, so it was just Alan. So he started on his own, and Gary started his own. It was the Rossington band and the Collins, the Alan Collins band. They were two different bands. Okay, right. So after uh, Rossington Collins split up, Gary went out to Wyoming, and then Alan formed 
the Alan Collins band and took Leon and Billy with them. Okay, well, that makes mm -hmm. sense. Yeah, that's all right. All righty. Um, okay, some guy named Charles from South Carolina. Now, he's always putting comments on YouTube, and it's always capital. So it's like he's screaming. Oh, and, I know. I always you know, tell him, why are you screaming? <laughs> <laughs> he says, I want you guys to love me back. I love your show, but this is a little bit of what he wrote. He said, This is again a great show, like always. I love this Skinner Stone Roadie Show family. Love me back. Take care. Peace. By the way, I'm Charles from South Carolina. So, Charles, we love you. We love you back. <laughs> and the Stone Roadie Show loves you. So. Yeah, quit writing in caps, though. Man, you drive me crazy. I can't read those <laughs> caps. <laughs> It all counts. I know. I know. Every once in a while, we'll get like, uh, who's the uh, your friend? She's always writing. I um, can't remember. She writes like consecutive um, e messages after a podcast. I can't remember her name right now, but big fans. All righty. Um, so then uh, Carter Clements, he said, did the Skinner guys ever jam with Greg Allman? No. Okay. Uh -uh. That's an interesting question because you said that they had, Alan and Gary were talking about potentially having um, Greg Allman. Yeah, they, they right? knew Greg from God before they even got, you know, they played with the Allman Joys and stuff before either one of them got big. Mm -hmm. oh. But, yeah, they knew Greg and everything, but... Uh, they never played together. So you knew Greg, right? Oh, oh God, yeah, I knew Greg. <laughs> so what was he? I know that. I know. I just asked because, <laughs> just for the record. So what was he like? Somebody he wants. Greg to know was cool. Was he like he was, you yeah. know, uh, just a burnout. I mean, not burnout. Uh, <laughs> a, a drug addicted rock star. <laughs> Did you yeah, know I him knew. when he was? When he, he did was a lot of cocaine. Share. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I knew him. <laughs> now, did you know when he was married to Cher? Yeah, I know we didn't really hang around with him then, you know. I thought that he, was He so knew me. Every time he saw me, he'd go, man, you got a little taste. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember when Barbara Bulow was on the show, she <clears> said that um, she loved Greg Allman, remember? And then Alan arranged for her to sit at a concert right behind Greg, and she just loved him. And she was so Oh, cool. Greg was cool. Loved very ta that. very talented guy, man. I love yeah. Greg. You know, oh, right. he was. That would have been cool. To, if the Well, Skinner and Allman Brothers never played together, right, on a live show? No, they did, yeah. At... Um, it did. At, uh, in 1974 at uh, the Atlanta Braves Stadium, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Is there any footage on that anywhere? I doubt it. 1974, I doubt it. Yeah, at oh, the Atlanta Braves yeah. Stadium, yeah, that was a good show. Oh, wow. I would have loved it. If anybody has any footage, send it to us or <laughs> put it on our Facebook page. All right. And then Tim Maney wants to know, in your opinion, if Ed King had never been with Skinner, how different would it have sounded? Um, you know, um, not much different, you know. Um, Ed, you know, Ed, Gary and Alan and Ronnie were the writers. I mean, Ed, you know, uh, put in his two cents, but he wasn't really the dominant writing force of the band so it wouldn't have been much different you know ed you know he he, he what he added was great but he wasn't the dominant writing force you know it was okay. ronnie and alan more more than, than anybody uh, you know and gary but he but, came yeah. up with the sweet home alabama uh, yeah you know. yeah yeah yeah. yeah, it was, the, you know, like when Steve came in, it it took a pretty, uh, a, a pretty severe turn in, in the way they were doing things. But I don't think Ed had a lot of influence in that because, 
you know, Ed wasn't a singer, and Ed, you know, when when Steve came in, you know, he, it was such a relief to Ronnie to have to have you know somebody help him sing and then help him write too, because Ed, you know, not to say Ed wasn't a lyric writer, but you know, not to not to, to the extent that Steve was, you know. Yeah, yeah, Steve really made a big impact on yeah the he made it he made a big yeah. impact but ed yeah. as far as the writing of the songs didn't make that big of an impact except for sweet home alabama, alabama which is their biggest yeah. song you know that's the one everybody knows so that's such a shame because that's you've said you know before that's not your favorite song and it's just some people think of leonard skinner to sweet home alabama and freebird i'm thinking you're so you're so um, clueless. You don't know <laughs> how many how many great songs there are. There are it's just crazy. <laughs> um, all right, and then Rob, Rob, I'm sorry, Rob Gribben. How did how I'm um, sorry. How did they come up with the set list? Who wrote the set list? And um, how often did they change the set list? <laughs> one time, one time they they thought it would be funny to play the play the whole set backwards so they did you're kidding <laughs> no they started they started off with sweet home of alabama and played the whole set backwards and then ended up with Freebird, and it didn't sound any different really <laughs> yeah they played the whole set backwards yeah but when did they change the set there. list or did they usually do the same songs in the same order when they they were, did the uh, same songs, and it was always they always started off with working for MCA. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. You know, and yeah. they, you know they always came out with a real, you know, punchy song, and then you come out with a couple of hard punches, and then bring it back a little bit, and then you know come out. They're they're all their set was pretty much power power punches, except for you know. Tuesday's gone and and Curtis Low, you know. Mm -hmm. They uh, did Curtis Low live. That was on their live set. Uh, they Curtis they, Low. Uh, Curtis Low was uh, 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 as far as I remember, Leonard Skinner played Curtis Low a few times live. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. It's interesting. All right. Um, now, a guy by the name of Noah says, Hey, Stoner, <laughs> I mailed you a big crystal rock. It says glass handle with care. Did you get that rock? <laughs> well, that that's uh, Cousin Figel. No, this is Noah. That's not Cousin. It's his a his name is crystal. Noah. A large really? crystal rock? No. Oh, I don't I know. All right, a piece Noah. of glass. Uh, cousin yeah. Figel sent me a piece of glass, a uh, volcanic glass from uh, um, New Mexico. But no, I never got a uh, a crystal rock. No. Well, this was just recently. He wrote this on the questions. So, all right, Noah, tell us more about that because the only <laughs> thing no, you I never was... got that. All right. Well, maybe they didn't handle it with care, but. It wasn't Fijel. Somebody by the name of Noah wrote that down. So, all right. We don't know about that. No, I got those rocks, but I showed those little bitty rocks somebody sent me that they found. But no, I didn't get yeah. a big crystal rock. No. Okay. I got. Where did you send it? To my P.O. box? or No, I didn't get it. All right. We didn't get it, Noah. Next one is from Steve Campbell. He said, um. Okay, the song Poison with Whiskey. After Artemis joined the band, did they, the original lineup, ever play Poison Whiskey live? Do you recall that? Poison Whiskey, was that on the set list? God, I, you know, man, going back to thinking how they, they I'm sure Poison Whiskey was on the, said it sometime but I, I i god i can't remember how many times they played that live i'm i'm sure they played it live mm -hmm. uh i just don't i don't it wasn't one of their 
Um, <laughs> I can't remember that song. There's, yeah. Well, what about remember. songs like Things Going On? You know, that's a real upbeat song. Did they ever play that live? I mean, a lot of songs that, um, you know, I, I've Been Your Fool. No, they, they never play? played that one live. Uh, Those are great songs. That's a lot why, of people uh, don't even know about I've Been Your Fool. I don't think that song was ever really on a uh, released on one of their uh, uh, records that they went gold or platinum and you know i think that was one a song that came out after the crash i think yeah it was on the best of the rest album and that is again one of my favorite songs i've been your fool that's the one where get um where um ronnie yodels but that's a great song there's so yeah. many that a lot of people don't know about yeah every time people ask me what's your favorite song craig i goes i've been your fool they go huh yeah. <laughs> I don't know that one. <laughs> you can get it on YouTube. Anybody checks it on YouTube. That is a great, great song. The the guitars, the yodeling, everything. I love it. I just love it. It's a really well, good song. I'm I thinking think about favorite. a get, getaway. Getaway came out today on Apple Tunes. Uh, Six Gun and uh, Barry Harwood and uh, Derek. Oh, Cass. really? They yeah, it came out on iTunes today. I guess Barry, uh, Barry really tore it up on um, uh, Getaway, you know, on the, on the that version of Getaway. So they got they got um, Barry and Derek to play on mm -hmm. the. Um, oh, cool! That's yeah, cool. On and Getaway with uh, with Six Gun and Seda singing. Yeah. You know, oh came wow! I wish I wish them luck. Chad yeah. called me. Day and say, God, you did you hear the getaway? You know, I go, no, I <laughs> oh man, Barry tore it up. Yeah. Are they doing any other songs? Do you know if they're recording anything else from Rossington Collins? No, I don't know that. Uh -uh, no, okay, just did getaway. That's a great song, great album. All right, um, next one is okay. This one question, um. A lot of has been said about Martha, Gary's first wife. Mm -hmm. Do you know how he met her and how in high school? Gary? Oh, they met in high school. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. Did Gary go to the same high school? He went to Robert E. Lee High School also. They all went to high school yeah, yeah. together. Yeah. Okay, so he met. As far as I know, Martha was Gary's first love, I guess. I don't know. Oh, and then Alan met Kathy in the high school. Mm -hmm. All righty. Okay. How long were they married? Do you know? Uh, I went to Gary's funeral with Martha. They got married in, uh, yeah, during Skinner, and then they got divorced during uh, uh, Washington Collins. Uh, so. Now, what you meant? You meant to say you went to Gary's wedding. Right, you were in Gary's. Yeah, I went to Gary. Did I see you? Know, I went you to yeah, funeral. I went to Gary's wedding. Yeah, that's yeah. okay. Yeah, we. So I, I set the I set Billy's piano up at Gary's wedding by myself, the white one, you know, and oh. uh, and and we and we wrote "Help Me" on Gary the bottom of Gary's shoes. So when they when they went up and kneeled knelt at the, the the altar, you know, <laughs> Gary's feet. <laughs> soles of his shoes were showing and they said help me <laughs> but the preacher caught it before it's before the thing. oh they did, they had to, yeah, they had to, Somebody yeah, said SOS. <laughs> so i didn't know that they met in high school i would love to look at the that yearbook back from when they all graduated that's been pretty pretty cool so so they were married right before, in 77, you said, right? About six months 76 before. 76 or 77, yeah. Uh -huh. All right. And then they broke up. Why? Was there a particular reason? I don't you? know. Uh, I don't know that. No. So she stayed with him after the plane crash and during mm -hmm. his recovery. Okay. Wow. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. When I, when I went back, when I went back down to, uh, 
to Florida, and I and I was staying with Gary. Yeah, Gary and Martha were still married when I was, and I and I was I, I stayed with Gary and Martha for oh, mm -hmm. a couple of weeks. I don't know. Then I went and then I went and started staying with my buddy Ronnie Caruso. Mm. Do you know why they didn't have any children? Did they? You know, I'm surprised no, they were married uh -uh. a couple of years. No, you uh -uh. don't know why though. Okay. Mm -mm. Hmm. That would have been cool. All right. Um, now, Carol Locke, she wants to know um, with regard to Steve Gaines's band, Crawdad. And I know that Griff said he's going to try to make a trip down to Steve's hometown, but she wants to know if there are any band members of Crawdad left that you know of that would know oh. information about Steve. Uh, the guy's name's Mo or something like that. Um, Joe Crimp knows those people. Joe's, um, um, yeah, he's been in contact with some of those people. But yeah, there's there's a couple of them left. From what okay. I understand, I don't know. I haven't personally been involved in that. That'd be cool if Griff could um, do the on the road with them with. Uh, interview those people that would be cool all right um question from erwin candlesdorfer did you ever know bruce Bar bruce barry he was the roadie that used to load the econoline van never heard of him okay uh, and, uh, and um i i, I <laughs> I hate to say that the guy's not telling the truth, but he was never a roadie for the band. He might have been a friend and put a, a couple of pieces of equipment in the band helping him, but he was never a roadie. <laughs> not a roadie. And that's an no. insult to you because you were a roadie. <laughs> say, listen, yeah. you're no roadie yeah. just because you throw, threw stuff in a truck, right? So, yeah, all righty. Uh, yeah, they, the, well, the Econoline van, we, they never loaded with equipment. They had, they used Big Blue as their equipment truck. The, the van was, was, was their band vehicle to get to the gigs. They never hauled equipment uh -huh. in the, a Conline oh, van. Conline. Okay. After okay. when I met them, uh, they they always had Big Blue was their equipment truck, and then uh, when I met them, they had they had the Conline van, but it was pulling a U-Haul trailer, and uh, the band all rode in the in the in the ten passenger Conline van, you know, because there's seven of them and two roadies you know so that's nine you know yeah in a 10 passenger van you know so uh yeah they were pulling a u-haul trailer when i met them it was a, a conline van pulling a u-haul trailer and they never they never loaded the van with the equipment so that's kind of puzzling <laughs> why he would say he used to load the the van with the equipment. The only time that van was ever loaded with equipment was when me and Mike Sparks uh, loaded that van full of equipment and went out to to El Paso, Texas. We mm -hmm. we, we loaded that thing. There was there wasn't enough room in there to to put a matchbook in there. <laughs> <laughs> we had it loaded 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 pretty good, yeah. But it You're was right. just the the, the 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 equipment to record the album with. But yeah, they never hauled equipment in the gun line. It was always all right. Yeah, so I guess he. So I kind of yeah. doubt that that's. I don't know who that guy is, and like I said, he was never officially a roadie. If he was, he didn't make any money because <laughs> <laughs> they weren't paying any money back then. <laughs> it was an unpaid roadie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. I got a question from Don Eric Evans. He wants to know which amp did Leon use? 
he is an ampeg uh, uh, um, uh, for uh, until we got the PV stuff. He used the ampeg. Okay, all right. He thought maybe it was a the PV musician. Oh well, well when um, <laughs> like I said, he used a a, a, a ampeg bass amp for until they got the uh, the the PV stuff. Mm -hmm. And then on the on the uh, his bass amp amps for uh, the, the 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 original band, he had four four uh, four hundred watt PV uh, amps in a uh, we had an amp rack, and there was like four four PV four hundreds in there with a preamp and stuff and he just uh, uh, used a PV uh, I forget uh, uh, what model or whatever but uh, the it was all powered with PV uh, uh, it was an amp rack he he got he had uh, uh, I, don't, I don't remember how many <laughs> was of power he had he had a lot of power he was he was running uh, a, 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 a cross-stage uh, 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 speaker cabinet for, uh, for Alan, and, and he was mm -hmm. running uh, uh, 615s and, and 812s. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, he had a lot of stuff up there. <laughs> Okay. It was all, yeah, it was it was Ampeg before it was PV, but yeah. Oh, gotcha. Okay. When when Joe Os Joe Osborne put him a whole built an amp rack for him, so after we we got the PV endorsement, Joe Osborne put him a whole rig together, and it was mm -hmm. it was uh, it was part of it was running out of phase. I don't I don't I, <laughs> it was, I yeah yeah. We were running some of it out of phase. I don't know. Okay. All right. And then uh, Jada Jayco. She's your friend, right? Jada? Yeah, Jada's my friend, yeah. She wants to know what Cassie was like. Anything you can tell us that we don't already know about her? Oh, well, gosh. I don't know a lot about Cassie except for, uh, you know, the story about uh, – you know, she was singing on Broadway, and she was uh, in the musical Hair, or, or or one of those. And and Steve and his parents went to see her in this Broadway <laughs> play, and she came out topless. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I. That's what I heard. <laughs> yeah, and Steve's going, "All right, sister." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but. Uh, but Yes, yes. Cassie is real cool, man. She was, you know, just real laid back, just a hippie chick, you know. Mm. Wasn't she the one that used to put the scarves all over the uh, hotel oh, room? Yeah. She used to decorate. Yeah, oh the God, scarves. yeah. She, yeah, yeah. Go in her room. She had scarves all over, and uh, looked like but she hippie. wasn't married, right? Leslie was married, but she wasn't married, right, at the time. No, no, or I don't remember. Know. I don't remember Leslie ever being married. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't. She wasn't married when she was with the band that that I remember. I, I know she had a couple of kids. She must have had them with Wet Willie. Uh, oh, okay, okay. She wasn't right. married during the. Okay. Yeah, and I know. <laughs> <laughs> But Jada said she heard that um, Jada was also a lifeguard, and then she was a substitute teacher before she joined the band. Who's so that? Cassie? Jada, Jada heard that um, Cassie had been a lifeguard and that she was a sub-teacher before she joined Leonard Oh, Skinner. I don't know that. Yeah. yeah, That's what she read. So, All right. Then John Pavlovsky, he wants to know about um, Ed King's book, The Autobiography. Uh, is it going to be censored before it's <sighs> Gosh, I, you know, I don't know. I, I thought Sharon was going to have that out by now. I sent her pictures, God, six months ago. I, you know, I was saying that, yeah, I, 
it was, you know, it was, it was in the works that I had sent her some pictures and that, you know, that it was, you know, apparently she's putting it together, but I don't know. I don't know what the, what, what the holdup is. I'm, you know, yeah, I don't, if, if, <laughs> you know, I can see a lot of reasons why she's, you know, mm -hmm. uh, probably not putting it out. There's, you know, people, there's people that just don't want, uh, any other opinions out there of what's going on uh, except for <laughs> the ones they want it says kind of like the democrats they just want to control the uh, <laughs> control the narrative of the whole situation well will the management have the right to censor the book or you know or can she just it wouldn't be the management it would be you uh, who are whoever Somebody else you know, whoever wouldn't wouldn't like what was written or whatever. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what I meant, and I don't want to mention his name, but that's what. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know what they can do as long as it's the truth. I mean, mm. you know. interesting. <laughs> All right, um, we have a couple of more, and then I have we have to end because I have to go somewhere tonight. I'm yeah, I was looking at, at the clock. Questions. Yeah. 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 Let's do one more question for the road. One more for the road, and then we'll <laughs> we'll take the take the rest up on the next uh, Saturday night special. Um, somebody, uh, Alan Rosenmeyer, Rosemeyer wants to know when Joe Crump is Joe Crump is going to come back on the Stone Roadie Show. Oh, you God, you got to ask uh, Griff about that one. Uh, 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 Griff talks to Joe all the time, and he's you know he's. Uh, Guess Griff uh, Joe's a little bit difficult to get to obligate himself to anything. But, but, uh, yeah, he co he comments about um, about my you know, a lot of my posts. You know, <laughs> he does. He's nice. He's, he's always he's always. I think he's. Uh, you know, <laughs> can, he's always and, putting comments like, and things on there. Sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of people don't, but you know, Joe's skinny, so he don't mind. <laughs> uh, and everybody's also waiting for Mike Estes to come back on too. Yeah, he's busy, man. That guy's that guy stays busy, boy. Yeah. He can the only time I really hear from him is on my birthday. He always calls me on my birthday. <laughs> oh, that's nice. That's nice to call you on your birthday. <laughs> so uh, we covered a lot today. I hope everybody has a nice Easter and thanks for checking out the Stone Roadie show. And thanks to um Dave the Disciple. Orange is not a color that I normally wear, but I'm wearing it because he sent it to me. And thank you for this cool shirt. <laughs> Fine knob. That was a cool place to play. Yeah. 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 He's a nice guy. He sent me so many shirts and things. I'm gonna have to wear them all. And then maybe next time I'll show the hu humongous road case. That thing is it's got to be like 48 inches long and it's so heavy he, he spent 91 dollars in postage so i already ordered something for him and um i'll be shipping it out to him soon to thank him but he's really a good guy and uh we really appreciate his support of the podcast so i hope everybody has a nice easter craig i know you're going to your sister's tomorrow i hope you have a nice easter yeah and i'm gonna go to my sister out of trouble <laughs> Stay out of trouble while you're there. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, all righty then, we done? Yeah, we are done for today. Thanks, everybody, for, for tuning in, and we'll see you in a couple of weeks on the Saturday night special. Happy Easter, everyone. What is that? I give a shout-out oh, to my, my buddy right. Tom from uh, – Yep. Parsons Land Clearing <laughs> and Services. He's going to be digging my pond out here. Cool. <laughs> cool. cool. Nice it's guy. So Very generous of you to do that. Give my, for, uh, <laughs> that. That's the new that's the new Griff Martin baptismal pond. So. <laughs> <laughs> but don't fish in there. Don't drink the water. <laughs> no, huh? it's storm water. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, so yeah, that's been uh, podcast one hundred and 
50 of the Stone Roadie Show with uh, your host, Craig Creed, and the lovely Kathy Godsey. And uh, until next time, see you later, alligator at the wild crocodile. Cut. Hi. <laughs> Happy trails to you. Happy trails to you, keep token until then.